we're here in the Halone area of California and we're going to turn right here into Fort Hunter Liggett. This is a US Army Reserve base and um, this is not our final destination today but we do have to pass through in order to get to the National Forest area on the other side. So we'll just talk through a little bit about how you get on driving through the base. It's not complicated. You know, in years gone by, this used to be the main checkpoint right here where you would have to provide all your documentation, driving license, insurance, registration documents. So it is always wise to have those documents on you in case you encounter an ad hoc checkpoint. And this area right here used to go straight into the base, into the cantonment where all of the facilities are. But it's bypassed now and we'll drive past the main entrance here. So this is on the right, it's the main entrance to the base, so we don't have to go in there to get where we're going. And on the left coming up here is the turn off to Del Venturi. That's where we want to go. However, we're going to take you on a quick detour first. And if you go straight instead along Mission Road, you'll arrive here at Mission San Antonio de Padua. As you can see, this was established in July 14, 1771, making it the second oldest mission in California. The oldest mission is the one in San Diego. And this one has been carefully restored. It's in very good condition now. It basically was rebuilt. And although I don't have time to show you around the inside, it is open to visitors and it's free of charge and you can go and see all of the uh, preserved and maintained artifacts of life, mission life, you know, from back in the day when the mission was active and you can also go into the chapel and uh, that is actually used for services these days, so well worth a visit. And the setting here is, I mean, you could be back in time, you know, we're immediately adjacent to Fort Hunter Liggett. You wouldn't know that the army base was basically next to you. Pretty special, a pretty unique location. Okay, so we're back on Del Venturi Road. Now driving through Fort Hunter Liggett still. It's about 12 miles to the National Forest boundary. And this road does have a couple of fords over the San Antonio River. This river kind of crisscrosses the road here and there flowing as it does into Lake San Antonio, which is nearby. And it's August right now, the river is pretty low, and I think these fords may be gated off during the winter months when the river is higher. Still in Fort Hunter Liggett for a few more miles as we head toward the US forest boundary. Crossing the National Forest boundary point here into Los Padres National Forest, leaving Fort Hunter Liggett behind us. And we have a few miles of paved road here between this point and Santa Lucia Memorial Park campground. And that's one of two campgrounds along this road. Um, that is not our final destination today. And you know, the Memorial Park campground, I think otherwise known as the Indians campground locally, should be pretty easy to get to for any vehicle. And that's not the flavor of this channel. As you may know, we like to go off the beaten track. So our final destination is Escondido campground. And that is about two to three miles of dirt road along the Indians road beyond the Memorial Park campground. Coming up on the left here is the Wagon Caves rock formation. This is an important archaeological site. It's a 56 acre area. A lot of indigenous history in this region and you can actually go up to these rocks and uh, explore the caves. One of the caves, the Wagon Cave, was supposedly large enough to park a stagecoach. So a lot of recent and ancient history in this area.
And the first campsite you get to is the Santa Lucia Memorial Park campground. I'm not going to dwell too long here. We'll just take a quick drive around this area, which I believe is a combination of parking for day use and then a few campsites here. I think there are eight campsites in total. And there's no water, just vault toilets. Pretty primitive or rustic, I think they call it. So there's this area and then the adjacent area on the other side of these trees is where there's another few campsites. And this is easily accessible from paved, the paved road from Belventuri or Milpitas <laughs> or whatever the road is called. Time to take a drive along Indians Road in Monterey County. Starting here from Santa Lucia Memorial Park Campground and heading up to the Escondido Campground. It's about a two and a half mile journey to the entrance, all on dirt roads, and from what I hear, it should be a beautiful drive. The road we're on changes names along the way, starting as Del Venturi and becoming Milpitas Road in some spots, but for simplicity, let's just call it Indians Road. This road was once part of an 18 mile route connecting from here to Arroyo Seco. Originally a fire road, it's been closed for over 20 years because of frequent landslides. The cost and effort of keeping it open after each rainstorm became too much, so now it's mostly used during firefighting efforts. It is worth noting that the road is still open to pedestrian traffic, so if you want to hike the 18 miles you can, or if you're a brave mountain biker. And as we come up to the turn off here for the Indians Road, notice the signs warning that the road is not suitable for large vehicles or trailers and it's impassable in wet conditions. And we're about to cross a dry ford, which I imagine turns into a wild stream during the rainy season. So for the next two and a half miles, we'll be navigating a single lane dirt track with some sections clinging to the edge of a shelf road. Maintenance levels on this road are unknown, so it's going to be an adventure. What is interesting is that Google Maps has a street view of this road. They actually sent a Jeep with a camera down here, giving you somewhat of a step-by-step -step view of the route. But it doesn't really tell the whole story, so I'm about to find out firsthand what the surface conditions and clearances are really like.
All right, so we're arriving here at Escondido Campground, and it's the first time we've been. So I'm going to take a drive through the site and see what is available. We actually left it too late to book online at uh, recreation.gov, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. If you uh, try and book within one week, I think, of your visit, you can't do it online, so you have to do first come first serve. And it looks like most of the campsites are on the right hand side here, apart from the one on the left as we came in. Um, here's the pay station if you need to uh, do the uh, first come first serve. And by the way, it is cash only if you're paying on site. It was $20 here in August of 2024. The vault toilets there on the right, there is no running water at the site. And it may not be showing too well here on the video, but each of these campsites on the right so far seems to have quite a slope coming down to the road, and that's not ideal for sleeping in the truck camper. So let's see if there's anything a bit more level later on. This one, again, it's, uh, there's quite a uh, slope coming down there. Fine if you're just parking for the night and if you have a tent. But I'm sleeping in the truck and it needs to be level. It needs to be as level as I can get it. Okay, this one again, it uh, has a slope on it. Alright, so this is it, I think. I think the this one is uh, fenced off and I'm not sure if the one beyond here is open. Okay, alright, well... I did see one site on the left coming in. Let's go back and check that out. Indeed, I'd recommend campsite number one. It's the first on the left as you enter the campground. It's the most level site in the campground. And the sun's setting now. It's about 5 or 6 p.m. We're just sort of uh, settling down for the evening. And uh, as you can see here, basically the whole campground is under a canopy of oak trees. And this whole place did burn, I think it was 2008, and the Indians fire started in this campground and burned about 80,000 acres, I think, something like that. And you can see why there's lots of, you know, vegetation and grass on the ground. So it's super important to be careful with fire safety. The Indians Road here, this is the way we came in. And the cut in the hillside above us is the continuing route of the Indians Road, closed to motorized traffic about a quarter of a mile along from Escondido Campground, open to hikers and cyclists. Beautiful location, gorgeous sunset, Really all that's left to round out a perfect day is some good old camping grub on the Coleman propane stove. To that end, we have burgers, we have buns, we have tomatoes, we have onions. And yes, I actually forgot the relish. But we don't need that. What we need is a nice simple meal as we sit here off grid, well away from any phone service and watch the sun set in the west. Delicious. So after an excellent night's sleep at Escondido Campground, had the whole campsite to myself basically, just time for a quick breakfast, gonna have a coffee and a protein bar today because we're heading out to Clear Creek actually, we wanna get going for that. But one tip that we found here is that, um, you know, when using the jet boil, if you want a quick coffee without a lot of mess, this cold brew concentrate from Starbucks is actually delicious and very convenient. You either mix it 50-50 with boiling water or just boil the mixture in the jet boil. And yes, I was curious about the gate, so I walked approximately a quarter of a mile up Indians Road from Escondido Campground. And as you can see, indeed, the road is closed. On the right hand side here, is a bypass for pedestrians and cyclists. And then turning around, here, just looking down, back down Indians Road, this is going toward the campground. And the road's a little overgrown here, but uh, it's not really maintained, I guess, beyond this point. So we're just gonna head back down to camp now, pack up the truck, 
I'm going to head out off the mountain here and back out of Hunter Liggett and actually headed to Clear Creek, which will hopefully be the next video after this one in our Off the Beaten Track series. All right, the truck is packed, I'm headed back down the mountain now, and I have to say the sunlight in the morning here makes this scene look very beautiful indeed. Reaching the end of the uh, Indians Road here, turning back onto Del Venturi, or Milpitas, or whatever it's called. And uh, we hope you enjoyed the video. It's a really nice getaway. It's an overnight getaway. Off the beaten track for sure. Um, I'd say that, um, you know, be prepared to get some pinstripes up there. I know I got a couple on the truck. Uh, I got some that I didn't show you. Uh, had a collision with a fallen tree that smacked the back of the truck pretty good up there. But yeah, definitely worth coming back, I think. Very serene location. Could be a more of a uh, busy sort of campsite at the weekend, I guess. Uh, we came on a Wednesday midweek and um, yeah, like I said, I had the campsite to myself. So thank you very much for watching our video. If you did enjoy it, definitely would appreciate a like. It does make a huge difference to our channel. And if you want to see more of our videos, why not subscribe to get notified of new video releases. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.